What's up, Sushi Squad? We back in with more Troll to Dove, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Pirate Captain and how you're going to end up building the Pirate Captain more specifically. Now, for those of you that already know how you build characters in Trove, uh, Pirate Captain's gonna end up being the same deal. It's just going to end up being a standard DPS character. But for those of you that are new to the game, uh, or maybe you just wanna have a little bit of extra information, because obviously we've had crystal rings added to the game uh, and so on and so forth. But generally speaking, the biggest thing that ended up happening with this update, uh, the Shadowhunter update, was that almost all of the characters across the board ended up getting slight tweaks and Pirate Captain is one of them. Pirate Captain ended up getting a pretty substantial upgrade. Oh God, help me. So we're gonna talk about uh, the changes that happened specifically with Pirate Captain before we get into how you're gonna build the character and I'll show you the gems and stats and everything that you wanna end up going for. I'm gonna end up kind of giving you guys realistic comparisons of uh, uh, how you're going to end up building the character kind of from a midpoint to an end game point. So my stats obviously are going to end up being all end game, uh, but the midpoint would end up just being a lower variation of that. So anyways, uh, Pirate Captain changes with the Shadow Hunter update, which isn't currently on console at the time I'm recording this, unfortunately, and we don't know when it's coming out, so stop asking. Uh, basic attack damage has increased from uh, increased to 200% up from 150%. The first mate basic attack, which is your little turret guy, has had its damage increased to 200% up from 100%, so that's already very substantial for Pirate Captain. But they also changed it so that first mate has increased attack speed when fully upgraded with doubloons. Now, let me show you guys this as a quick little example, because if we throw one of our turrets down, that's basically the normal speed, but now they've changed it so that when we end up giving it fully upgraded doubloons, if it would stop lagging... Hello? Can you guys, like, stop? <laughs> also, can the doubloons work? There we go. So, bang, 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 bang. At increased damage as well. That's the real bottom line that I want to share, and it's, you know... Don't use the dummy comparison uh, to show you guys like, oh my God, it's doing 12 mil each. It's like, no, it's not. The, those dummies are broken. They don't show accurate damage number representation. Uh, the other thing that they changed was the pretend pirates area of effect damage has been increased to 350% up from 250%. And then man o war area damage, which is going to end up being your ultimate, has had its uh, area of effect damage increased to 650% up from 600%. So overall, just across the board updates. A plus. Um, in terms of feedback, just before we talk about the build, how could you end up using the character? Frankly speaking, I think that the Pirate Captain is going to shine more so in Delves now than anything else. Uh, but you'll also end up being a pretty decent boss killer. I, I wouldn't really recommend Pirate Captain as a speed farming class. Uh, you know, you can main Pirate Captain for anything is the thing that's really really nice right now kind of the same as how shadow hunter is a jack of all trades master of none uh but you know shadow hunter has a little bit better scaling than something like the pirate captain but pirate captain i would say might end up being better in the delves uh at least in terms of just fighting normal enemies not necessarily the boss itself uh, but there are some tricks that you can end up doing to annihilate bosses with the pirate captain uh and most of all that's going to end up being uh potion spamming so let me actually swap to my knight subclass just so i can have the extra flask because essentially what you can end up doing to deal insane amounts of damage damage as the pirate captain is if you potion spam the same as any character in the game you can end up having tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of your turrets out all at once i think you can get like a total of five just before they end up uh you know going away maybe even six if we had enough flasks Ooh, i'm kind of curious now if we ended up using the bandolier yeah e either way point is that just does heaps of damage more so than most people give credit. So if you're fighting like say a Leviathan and you're able to pull that off while other people are there so you can constantly refill your flasks, you can use Pirate Captain to fight Leviathans now. Pirate Captain, funny enough, always had really, really high damage if you ended up doing that. It's just that a lot of circumstances 
in the olden days of Trove didn't really call for that, you know, like there was maybe Shadow Tower bosses and that was basically it. But now we're kind of at the point where the game has been broken up into multiple quadrants and, you know, it's just speed farming. Pirate Captain doesn't do the best, but you do enough damage that you can beat bosses and fight and use the character anyways. But OK, let's get into the build. Never mind all this rambling. Oh, God, excuse me. Uh, so in terms of your gear, you know, obviously you want to have the highest crystal gear possible. Generally speaking, I would suggest that you have attack speed as your second stat because you want to always, always, always have attack speed on all of your gear. And then that gives you the option to cycle your fourth stat or your fifth stat on crystal gear. Uh, your final stat, you can cycle off of movement speed when you're doing farming to crit damage if you're just doing boss farming. Like, it, it, you know, it really depends. Pick your poison, right? Generally speaking, I would always recommend having movement speed just because I personally can't stand when a class is moving really, really slow at like a snail grandma, grandma pace. Uh, but either way, it's something that you do need to keep in mind. Uh, the gun, as you can see, I unfortunately don't have attack speed on it just because this was a C4 gun that I had from, uh, I don't know, a long time ago. I gotta wait for a second stat reroll event or something. But hey, whatever. And then movement speed on this, which... Uh, it's a crystal three hat so it doesn't matter but anyways uh for the ring itself you're gonna go for the highest crystal ring that you possibly can uh and then otherwise beggars can't be choosers you just kind of gotta pick what ability you feel like you can end up using uh but at least with the pyro captain a lot of its hidden effects are going to end up being useful so a vasty makes it so your basic attacks uh will or make your minions target your opponent but it also applies a debuff to the enemy which increases your damage done to it so that probably is the best uh hidden effect just because any pirate captain main already knows the weakest link of the character is that your turrets target whatever the hell they want but in this case now you can actually force them to start attacking the opponent that you do want to end up hitting it doesn't mean that enemies won't end up getting in the way of your projectiles or anything like that obviously that's still going to end up being a big problem uh but generally speaking at, you know at the very least you'll have more control and you'll be doing out you'll be outputting more damage another one that you can do is all hands on deck which makes it so that when you use your ultimate ability a pirate cannon Nearer will be summoned as well and these guys are also not limited which means that that all hands on deck may or may not be the boss killer build because uh, essentially you could use that ability and uh, you know you saw we ended up getting like five six turrets that would be five or six extra pirate cannoneer minions that would be outputting a pretty decent amount of damage so uh, i don't know it's kind of up to you honestly speaking either or should work it's just i frankly speaking don't really think that debuffs work on leviathans very well like even when you end up shadow marking them with a shadow hunter it barely seems to do anything but anyways uh, for your ally, you're definitely going to want to end up having Puck because the cooldown reduction is going to end up being the most important thing. As mentioned, uh, I don't know why I'm visually using Avier, but Puck is going to end up being your best bet. Uh, if you do not have Puck, you can end up using Chromatic. Uh, yeah, Chromatic. I don't know why I typed in Prefix Penguin. Um, but the, you know, the, the Delve version, the, basically Puck is the Delve version of Chromatic because it's just going to end up having the light stat value, but the reduced cooldown is what you're most of all going for. For your banner, you basically just want to have the one that has the most light possible that you currently have, uh, which the Leviathan torches do that, but I just generally speaking don't farm the Leviathans often enough. Well, I do, but I just don't use the torches because I don't care about a temporary item to boost me. And now for your flask, generally speaking, I always just use death defying. You know, it's kind of the go to for me uh, because survivability is more important than, uh, you know, being able to constantly cast uh, or use flask. I mean, or running out of flask, whatever. Blah. Uh, there are other options though. Uh, as I said, Elysian Bandolier has some of the highest flask capacity in the game. So that could be useful if you're just using your ult. It doesn't mean that you're going to have very good healing though. Uh, Vial of Unleashed Power can be okay, but generally speaking, not the best on Pirate Captain. Uh, Conjurer's Crucible is going to be uh, one of the biggest ones that gets you through the game so long as you end up having magic find because basically you'll recharge flasks uh, while using, uh, you know, while getting magic find and doing dungeons and so on and so forth. But that would mean that you would have to have a little bit of survivability to compensate. So for your emblems, usually I would recommend a combination of arcane and chromatic once again, just because we want to have our alt cast as many times as possible. Uh, the other options that you can end up using trailblazing if you are absolutely 
absolutely dead set on using pirate captain as a speed farmer unyielding if you need that extra survivability that i just mentioned and then uh sure strike if you don't have the crit hit so if you're suffering from your crit hit percentage you definitely want to end up having one of those uh to compensate for it now for the subclass ability personally speaking i always just use the knight subclass ability just because it gives me the more movement speed and it gives us more flash capacity which ultimately might mean more damage just because of the uh, fact that we can end up casting our ult a little bit more but it depends because if you're fighting a leviathan you should be constantly refilling your flask so that extra flask capacity isn't gonna make as much of a difference uh as it will in delves because in delves you know you're gonna slowly run out of flask because delves is just such a slog uh that you want to end up having more flask capacity just so that you can output that more damage overall but also have the survivability otherwise your best bet is going to be using lunacy mode just because it's going to end up uh you know making you go big and ultimately increasing your damage but it's not as big of a deal as you might think uh and then anyways now we're going to be moving on to the gems and so on and so forth but first let me just talk about the stats that you're going to be focusing on just kind of at a base value so this is like mid to end game right so for your magic damage i'd recommend anything over eighty thousand is going to end up being really important up to maybe one hundred and fifty thousand, as you can see which what uh, uh, i've got and then your crit damage anywhere from 800 percent and up uh, on certain classes i actually have my crit damage at like two thousand percent which is a little bit more ideal because what you're trying to find is a nice ratio between your raw damage and your crit damage but we'll talk about that when we talk about gems for your crit hit you want to have 100 that is the ideal that you're going for because with the way that crit hit works in trove when you have 100 crit hit you are dealing crits 100 of the time unlike other games where it's you know an additive value uh but if you don't have that 100%, that's okay. You, like I said, you can compensate by having sure strike and so on and so forth. Now, let's talk about the uh, empowered gems and then the lesser gems. So in terms of coefficiency of the character, honestly speaking, it doesn't matter as much as people put credit towards it. Generally speaking, uh, what I'm going to explain to you with the gems and how you're going to pearl them is just kind of a rule of thumb. You don't have to follow it to the letter and you may end up actually having a build that is slightly better than mine. Uh, but generally speaking, coefficiency only really matters for super duper deep delves uh and then other than that you're only gaining like maybe a thousand extra damage or something anyway so it doesn't really matter uh for the uh empowered uh, cosmic gem you want to either have berserk battler is going to be the damage gem but if you want survivability it'd be the vampirium i would recommend berserk battler on pirate captain because the character is a damage dealer and then you want to end up having all of your pearls on light value same with all of your lesser gems as well you want all of your pearls onto the light stat no exception and then the ex uh, extra gem stats are going to end up being magic damage and crit damage because crit hit is not going to end up being nearly as important as you think because when you have your gems fully augmented you'll actually be a little bit over 100% for your crit hit but anyways for the uh, other empowered gems cubic curtain is a great one pyro disc is really good for speed farming um I guess that's pretty much all you can end up using on the pirate captain frankly speaking because the other gems are kind of lackluster but you can see that in terms of my magic damage build I just have a mired mojo thrown in there which is not a very good one uh but the point is that you you know beggars can't be choosers especially when it comes to the empowered gems so just kind of use whatever you've got in your arsenal and that's all there is to it uh so the other thing too that you're going to focus on for all of your empowered gems they're going to end up being two pearls magic damage one pearl crit damage no pearls into crit hit that's the stats that you want to end up having on all of your empowered gems including your classroom ability which you can see my classroom ability is really really jank and we still do lots of damage the pirate captain so that's just going to show you guys that the potential of this character hasn't even been fully met because i don't have him fully built you know but i just can't be bothered to uh augment this uh gem or anything but anyways moving on to the lesser gems the lesser gems are gonna end up being what i like to call a three by three ratio so this is just kind of a very easy for your mind build but not necessarily essential so this is where you can vary your build from mine ever so slightly like if you just so happen to have a gem that's got more pearls into crit damage rather than magic damage than me that's fine it doesn't really matter but 
You're going to try and have three of your lesser gems have two pearls magic damage, one pearl crit damage, no pearls crit hit, and then another three of the gems is going to end up being the opposite, which is two pearls crit damage, one pearl magic damage, and no pearls into crit hit. But you can see, you know, I've already got this one that's got three pearls into crit hit. That's perfectly fine. It's perfectly acceptable. If you end up having over 100% crit hit like I do on my pirate captain right now, just because of the way that pirate captain scales, he has higher crit, uh, crit hit than other characters that I use these magic gems off uh, but the point is that if you have too much crit hit you can cycle crit hit off of one or two of your gems to give you more max health which will end up in turn giving you more survivability but that would only be recommended if you're absolutely maining the class uh, because the crit hit values and just the stats of all of the characters in general slightly vary so you'll notice that certain characters will have to have more crit hit value on their gems than uh, you know, something like the pirate captain in today's example uh, has a little bit of a higher value, which means that I could exchange it for some more uh, max health. But anyways, I think that's going to do it. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. Smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want to support the channel, and have a wonderful day.